with the growing trend of us working more at home uh, than in the office and securing even sensitive files uh, that we keep uh, within our own homes on our computers. Um, TrueCrypt, this application here, is a great little application that will help you secure files in your home environment um, so that if you leave your computer on, for example, nobody can come in and access those files or perhaps you store those files out on Dropbox or any other uh, form of shared media, you can still secure and rest assured that they will stay secure in that environment. So let's go ahead and start with this tutorial of TrueCrypt. As you see here, I've already started um, the TrueCrypt application here. Just do a search in Google for TrueCrypt and download and install the program to your local system. You'll come open to a screen that looks just like this and we're gonna go ahead and get started from this point. So let's go ahead and just move this guy over to the side here a little bit. The first thing that you want to do is create a file. It doesn't matter what the file is. We're just going to create a file. Uh, we'll use a Word document, for example, or text document. It doesn't matter. And we're going to put here a uh, test uh, container. Now, you can name this anything uh, that you want. A suggestion is that you do not name this file something like my sensitive passwords. You know, name it something like miscellaneous files or um, family photos or something like that that somebody who was looking for sensitive information wouldn't automatically assume that that's it. Okay, so that's kind of the first step that you do here, create the file. The second step that you want to do here is actually create a volume. And so we're going to go ahead and select the create a volume button. And here a wizard will pop up that will ask us to create a container. Now you can do several things here. I'm just going to go with create a standard container and select next. Standard container here, select next. Now we're going to select a file. Remember this is the file that we're going to be selecting. So I'm going to go ahead and just hit select file. Go to my desktop and I'm just going to find that file test right there and I'm going to hit um, so I found the file here, test, and I'm going to hit save. Okay. Do you want to replace it? Yes. Okay. Now I see the file right in here. We're good to go. Never save history. That's something I always click on because I don't want in case somebody breaks into my machine to see and then be able to guess my passwords. So here I'm going to say next. Now you can pick all types of security. This is a FIPS approved security. It's pretty secure AES. And just go with the default okay these work but you can go down here and go you know two fish and serpent or AES you know whatever you want to do well we'll just select that one for right now okay and so this is a pretty secure uh, three ways and then we could secure whatever we want with 512 or rip or whatever we want to do let's just pick that one it doesn't really matter you can pick whatever you like they're all very secure some of them are more secure than others and then we're just going to hit next. And then we're going to decide how much space we want to give this. Now this says that I have 445 gigabytes on my hard drive. So let's just say that I want to make sure that I have enough space. So I'm going to do 25 megabytes because I'm not going to hold a lot of stuff. Now the thing is that you want to be careful of here. So I'm going to put in 25 meg and hit next. And then I'm going to create a password. Now I should create a password that's very difficult to guess. So I'm going to create 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, because that's a really hard one. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. You can do a lot of things. My, my normal password for TrueCrypt volumes is about 25 characters long. So you'll want to do that. And here we can hit display so we can see to make sure they're good. We're going to hit next. And of course, it's going to tell me it's too short, right? It wants more than 20 characters. We're going to say... I'm going to go ahead and use a short one, okay? And then now, this is kind of an interesting thing. The more you move your mouse, if you notice I'm moving the mouse here. By the way, I can select NTFS or FAT. The more random that key becomes, okay? So it says here, move your mouse as possible in the window. The longer you move it, the better, okay? And so we can sit here for five or ten minutes and do that. I think you get the drift. I'm just going to hit format, okay? And here what it's telling me is it's going to format this and I'm not going to be able to, to come back. Fine. Okay. I'm going to hit yes. 
and the volume was created successfully, okay, and then just simply hit exit at this point. Now this volume is ready to mount. If I try to open up this volume, by the way, um, it's not going to open properly, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and mount this. So to do that, um, what you do is you take the file and you drag it onto uh, this right here. So I'm going to mount this to Q. I could drag it and mount it to L. Let's mount it to L. So here we have that. I'm going to hit mount. And I'm going to type in my password. And then retype in the password. And now you see that the volume mounts. And this is the volume right here. Notice here that it's L drive. <coughs> Notice it's uh, right here is the L drive itself. It's 24.58 megabytes. Notice here that we have an L drive and it appears here as a local drive, L. And I can drag a file, uh, for example, I can drag this file right to it and it worked just fine. And I can add as many files as I want into this environment. Um, and I think you get the idea, right? It works just like any other folder on your desktop. Okay, so that's that and that's created. So now I can just close this and this container's still open, right? So I'm going to go ahead and dismount it and exit. Okay, so I shut down TrueCrypt. Now this is the actual file. And if you look at it now, um, you can see that it just looks like a normal file on the desktop. Let's go ahead and double click on it and see what happens. So as I'm double clicking, notice that it's trying to open it up, but it doesn't understand what it is. See how it says not responding? It's just going to do that. So anybody who found this file would automatically think, ah, that's a broken file. Must not be working right. So I'm going to go ahead and just close that. And that is the end. And that's the, the area. So let's go ahead and open up TrueCrypt one more time and reaccess those files. So again, this would be now you could move this out to the cloud or move this anywhere because now it's um, secured properly. So again, I have it here. I'm going to drag it right into the space. I'm going to enter in my username and password, my password, excuse me. And remember here, that was my password. I hit OK. Automatically mounts and automatically opens. And those are the three files that I had in there. Pretty cool, huh? Now, if you're working with really sensitive files, here's a little trick. Go up to your settings and go to preferences and say auto dismount after no data has been um, accessed onto this section for 180 minutes. So a lot of times I'll take and say um, I don't, you know, I want to make sure that this dismounts on my system. I want to show you one last thing here related to this. Let's say that I have my local share here and I have my TrueCrypt volume here. And um, I'm keeping it. And I have a network share. Maybe I'm running a, a network in my house or maybe it's at my office and I've got a network share there. And I've gone ahead and taken this file, this file here that I crypted, and I mount it. I just set it up here on my local uh, network. When I open up this network share, excuse me, when I open up this TrueCrypt volume, I can actually share the volume. And so what will happen is when I'm online, I can do synchronization between the network and my local copy, both of them protected by TrueCrypt. So I move TrueCrypt, this becomes a TrueCrypt volume here as well. And then, um, I set this again, I set this to be a uh, 90 uh, minute dismount. So if I have a network share and I'm not using that share up on my server, this will automatically dismount. And on my client here in my office, it'll automatically dismount within 90 minutes. So what that does is it gives you your TrueCrypt volume at your local machine, which you can use all the time, but you want to make sure you back that up and you're backing it up up here uh, to the server, but you're also using a TrueCrypt volume up there. So when 
when uh, anybody, if they hack into your network, go to your server or to your client, you're protected on both sides. And there's a great little application that I use, um, and I'm not going to talk about it on this video because this video is about three times as long as I usually like it. But you may want to try uh, this little program here called SyncBack Pro. SyncBack Pro. Uh, it's a great little application that does uh, synchronization. You can do it to USB cards, to different files on your network, to all kinds of things. So it works real well. So sorry for the length of this one, but hopefully it was uh, informative too.